Hey, my puppies! This is Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving, Finally the Universe Makes Some Freaking Sense. And today's burning question comes from Awesome Reggie. I have been trying to use the Law of Attraction for years now, ooh, trying, and have come to the conclusion that expectation is at the root of the Law of Attraction, but I cannot find any techniques on how to make your expectations manifest. What I mean by expectation is the knowing that you already have whatever you desire from the Law of Attraction. For example, I have noticed that the little things I think about seem to manifest almost instantly. That's because it's such a small thing, and I expect it, I expect it almost like a natural reflex. The big things, however, don't manifest. I have not found anything to help develop expectations. I have read somewhere that expectation is increased every time you manifest a desire. That's why novices are told to stay small when trying to manifest something. I'm looking for some techniques to help keep the same level of expectation, whether it's a small thing or a big thing. Well, Reggie, first of all, I would like to change the word expectation in your question to trust because I think that's going to make a lot more sense. When we're talking about the word expectation, it's very easy to get confused because there's a general expectation of things are going to be great. I have a general expectation that things, good things are going to come to me or a very specific expectation such as I have to have a Mercedes SLK in my driveway um, next week, preferably in red. Thank you very much. But when we talk about trust, um, this is what I would translate your question as because trust does build over time. And every time that you manifest successfully and you can actually consciously see this is what I did and this is what manifested, I actually did that, you do develop more and more and more trust. And since everything is a progression, everything waxes or wanes, everything grows or diminishes, your trust will grow over time as you continue to accept the manifestations that you're coming in as valid um, evidence that you are doing this and that the law of attraction works. So the reason why small things are so much easier to manifest than, than big things is because, well, we have decided that they're big things. We've decided that they're big deals and we make big deals out of them and they mean more to us. And so usually when things, be, things mean more for us, when, when they're big deals, it means that we're further away from them vibrationally and we tend to have a little bit more resistance. Finding a parking space, not a big deal. If you find one, you don't find one, it's not going to affect your life in a huge way. But boy, is it nice when you focus on having a free parking space and get into the feeling state of that. Remember, that's always the key, the feeling state. And then parking spots show up. But i got to tell you that I never, ever, ever order a parking space from the universe anymore. But I always get a parking space wherever I go, right in front, even when other people are in the car. How is that? Because I'm in a really good feeling state, and I'm in a happy, generally positive expectant state. I trust that the universe is doing everything it can to bring me stuff that makes me feel good, and finding a parking space right up front makes me feel good. But it's not a big risk. You don't have a lot of resistance to that because, again, if it doesn't show up, well, then you'll get a parking space in the back. You'll figure out some alternative. Whereas when you're thinking about something like, oh, I want a relationship, or I want this job, or I want a bunch of money, there's usually a big risk to not achieving that, a great deal of disappointment if you don't achieve it. And so the technique that I can give you for building trust is, uh, it may be satisfying to you, hopefully, but it's not so much a technique as it is a process, which is for you to continue to manifest consciously, um, but do so from a place of not specific expectation. Because when you get really specific about things, what you're saying is this thing has to manifest so that I can feel the way I want to feel. But I don't feel the way I want to feel right now until this thing manifests. But when this thing manifests, I will feel the way I want to feel. But I don't feel that way now. Do you see the cycle that you're stuck in there? And of course, if you don't feel the way that you want to feel now, you are not a match to that vibration. And then the thing that represents that cannot come in to your reality. It cannot manifest. And so what you want to do is you want to decide why you want this thing. And do you even want that thing or do you maybe even want something else instead? Um, because as we start to kind of ask ourselves, why do I want this thing? A lot of the time, our desire actually becomes a lot more concrete. And we're able to see that what we actually want may be something even bigger than that or further than that or better than that or slightly different from that. And then figure out how you want to actually feel. 
and then do everything that you can to get into that feeling state. And one of, the, one of the techniques that you can use to do that is to visualize what you want. But again, be careful not to decide that you must have this thing because there's a difference between wanting and needing. When you want something, that's great. Yeah? When you need it, you're saying, I need this thing so that I can feel good, which I do not yet. Yeah? So um, when you want it, that's great. You can get into that state of feeling. You can get into a positive expectation, anticipation. Yeah, if you know that you're going to Paris next week and you've already got the tickets, you're not impatient about that because you know you're going. You're not checking constantly. Do I have the ticket? Is everything organized? You are in a positive place of anticipation. But if you're not sure if you're going, you're not sure it's actually going to manifest, now you have that impatience. Now you're wanting to check up on all the details. Now you're worried about it. So as you focus on a visualization, you can use anything that you want. So I want to go to Paris. I see myself going to Paris. I'm getting into the state of feeling that I want to, that, that being in Paris will bring about. Now look for the ya yeah buts. Anything that doesn't quite feel the way that you want it to feel. That's your resistance surfacing. That's you moving in the direction of what you want, and that's the resistance surfacing. And then you can work on changing those elements. Yeah, but I don't have enough money. But what if I did? What if money wasn't an option? I just want it to be easily affordable for me. So you start changing those elements so that you can actually feel as good about it as you really want to feel, so that you can really achieve that feeling state. And then when things show up, Choose to trust the small manifestations, and this is how you build trust. You choose to trust the small manifestations. You choose to say, this is valid. This is part of my manifestation. This feels like this. I recognize that it feels like this, and so I'm going to just choose to trust, because there's not much risk in that, because it's small stuff. Just choose to trust that that is actually part of the manifestation, that you have brought that about, that that has manifested in response to what you've been doing with your energy, and that is how you build trust. And that's why all the teachers say start small, because it's so much easier to choose to trust the small stuff than the big stuff. But I got to tell you, as a person who's been living this for a long time, you do get to the place where you trust the big stuff too. But that trust is not like a switch that you can just flip. You do build it. It's like a muscle that you exercise and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So I hope I've answered your question. If you think that this content is valuable, please do share it with other people who might benefit from it as well. And if you want to join in on the discussion, if you have a question or you have an experience that you'd like to share, please leave a comment below or come over to deliberatereceiving.com if you're not watching it on the blog and share your experiences there with the Happy Shiny Puppy Army, an awesome community of super supportive LOAers who are just waiting to meet you. This was this week's Q&A. Uh, thank you so much for all of your questions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.